Welcome everyone to the 15th edition of Neo Reality Collective. So, not as much news as, say, everywhere else going on, but um, we're going to dig deep into things, go into the gist of gaming news and all that crazy nonsense, and comic, some bo comic book news, some wrestling news that may be, may be scheduling to happen, but um, it's just... <laughs> Oh man, it's just crazy sometimes in the world of pop culture and and all this nonsense, but excuse me. So Chadwick Tom McFarlane has announced that he will memorialize Chadwick Boseman on a special spawn cover on spawn issue three one one where it shows Chadwick Boseman as Spawn doing the Wakanda pose. Wakanda forever! And as part of the official press release, Todd McFarlane pays tribute to Chadwick Boseman in the upcoming Spawn cover. Image Comics president Spawn creator Todd McFarlane will pay tribute to Chadwick Boseman in the upcoming Spawn three, number 311 three, three, with the cover in memorial, memory of the late actor who brought to life Marvel's Black Panther character in the Avengers films. Given the limited amount of majority characters in the comic industry today that are considered major superheroes, I thought it would be appropriate for one of the most well-known heroes, Spawn. I want to pay tribute to a man who made a lasting impact upon helping shut shape such a strong superhero of color. Chadwick Boseman is a person who honed his skills and then made a career using them. Then he fought a fight against his own body that showed his true spirit of this man. And we should all admire the traits Chadwick shared with us and the inspiration he gave to millions of children around the globe. We get to, we got to see a strong, meaningful, and proud hero that looked like themselves. This comic is set to release on the 28th of October. So as we continue the um, review regarding being Chad Boseman, uh, Chadwick Boseman, it's sad that it, it happened. It's just... It's just sad that it, like no one saw it coming because no one knew it was coming. But yeah, I'm glad that so many comic industries and so many companies and everything are honoring this guy's work and honoring the dedication he did did for the for the industry of movies and TV and to the comic book stuff. But it's just so surreal that 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 happened. I still am amazed by that that happening because. You couldn't imagine. You couldn't imagine, imagine it happening because it was just so unbelievable. I, I I watch this and then I hear this, like I was watching SmackDown. Roman Reigns had turned heel. Then I got news like thirty seconds after the event. Then when he goes in and it shows that believe that by Paul Heyman, and then we get the announcement. And I was like, oh god. Like, that was the perfect summarization of 2020, essentially. We got this thing we've been waiting for years to happen, and then this happens. Because, fuck us, right? But, Jerry Boseman, rest in power, Wakanda forever! And all that, that, uh, he's in the ancestral plane now, and let's see if Siri's gonna step up, step up to the plate. So... The Matrix movies, Matrix 4, is continuing its run with alumni characters. The Hugo Weaving said, uh, Hugo Weaving's not coming back tragically because, uh, well, it, he won't. Hugo Weaving saying that L Lana Lachowski pulled a plug on negotiating Agent Smith's return, which would have been awesome, even though he's, he's dead along with Neo, but Keanu Reeves is coming back. But actress st and stuntman Daniel Bernhardt uh, recently signed on to reprise his role as Agent Johnson in the upcoming Matrix 4. Um, the character starred in Reloaded as the unofficial leader of the upgraded agents following Agent Smith's apparent death. However, Smith would appear reappear as a self replicating computer virus given how the third film, The Matrix Revolution, ended with the war between humanity and the machine stopped. It's unclear how Agent Johnson will factor into the fourth film. So, yeah, he didn't have much of a big role. He just more like more like was a fighting guy like he fought Keanu Reeves in the in the first opening scenes and then and then fought Mor Morpheus Lawrence Fishburne up top of moving truck which was the best scene in Reloaded uh and 
Conveniently, he had reunited with with Keanu Reeves and John Wick as a henchman, and as a henchman character, er, whom Wick manages to kill in a church fight. So yeah, he also starred in Atomic Blonde, Hobbs and Shaw, Escape Plan, The Extractors, and the DCEU film Birds of Prey. So yeah, it's scheduled to arrive next in. 2022 April 1st, so expect the biggest April 1st, April Fool's Day ever. But yeah, uh, Lawrence Fishburne isn't returning for the sequel, sadly. But it is going to be interesting where all these characters are going to go now in the aftermath of Matrix 3, especially how things ended up with there. So, one of the writers of uh, Rogue One has teased some news next week. Eek, Gary Wida, Wida saying this on Twitter. Some news coming from a galaxy far, far away next week. Stay tuned. And and the tease comes from a statement in July when he said he sold a movie script that he said was a big one. Okay, okay. I sold a movie script, writing and producing. Hope to be able to talk about it soon, he wrote in July. So it's currently unknown that this is part of his the Star Wars universe, but this latest news he made is part of the Star Wars universe, but if this is part of his big script he sold, oh, that would be interesting. But, yeah, we're going to see something. I'm pretty sure it has to do with... I, I keep thinking it most likely has to do with um, Rogue One uh, prequel series with uh, Cassie Nandor and, and, and everyone's favorite droid. Oh, man. Sorry about that audio thing. Uh, I forgot to mute some things, but um, yeah, uh, yeah, I I liked Rogue One. I thought it was the best art past movie of the Disney era of Star Wars, Disney film at least of the Star Wars in Star Wars new era, which is saying something where a prequel film spinoff is, in my opinion, better than the sequel trilogy. Which is nothing but to me but death and despair, long term wise, in universe speaking. But, uh, yeah. Before I continue depressing myself with what could be potential spoilers for my thoughts on the, on the sequel trilogy uh, on the Rise of Skywalker retrospective, I may want to do one day. Probably not. Probably might. Who knows? Anyways, uh, so the Nintendo Sega TV series, The Console Wars, or is the they got into an interview of the directors talking about console and console wars are turning the fight between Nintendo and Sega to a limited series on CBS All Access. So this is what they had told GameSpot. Blake came to me and said, I found this cool story. I don't know what it is yet. He's like, I think it's it's a it's a book. Book. And you have all this great media and you want to replace it in the time capsule of the 90s, which is sort of the biggest thing we try to do when this is turning into this into a time capsule. Um, but they are saying, how will the series differ from the documentary, though? It becomes much more of a character piece. I think you all really want to get into the characters even deeper and deeper and deeper in a series like that. And, you know, you have the best actors in the world are able to handle it and take the characters who need another level. Thus, no, thus far, no casting has been announced, but the documentary is full of interesting characters. Chief among them is Tom Klansky, the former CEO of Sega of America, who helped he helped launch the Sega Genesis, coming to the company after working for Mattel over a decade. And they talk about that, but yeah. So, like, they get to see... So, this, so the console war documentary is streaming now on CBS All Access, but they now want to turn it into a limited series divided into episodes. So that could be interesting. I, I could be interested in that. Like, I love consoles. I love gaming, as you can see from the piles and piles of stuff over here. In fact, that's not even all of it. That's like the tip of the iceberg. Like, if you saw much PS1, 2, 3, a little bit, Xbox, Xbox 360 games I bought... It, it, it would be insane. It would genuinely be insane, but they're all put in boxes right now because I'm I'm not using them right now. But maybe one day we'll see videos of them. But who knows? Uh, Technology is a lot different than it was when I had them. Highly detailed Ghostbusters prop replica is made to look poorly constructed. So they announced. So it was revealed that um that this replica from. 
like okay so hasbro has revealed a um a ghostbusters replica the um ghostbusters plasma series whatever Neutral Ron, maybe, uh, maybe insane according to this, but they so they said that the, oh we intentionally made it look poorly constructed because well they always kind of built it off of parts and everything in the Ghostbusters movie, but this is a replica from the Ghostbusters Afterlife movie which is set to launch on March fifth, twenty twenty one, and and it's very detailed. I I'm just looking at some of the images. It's very detailed and everything. But it does look like it's poorly constructed, like it's like it's intentional. So so if you unpack it when it comes out, uh, don't don't get mad and say, oh, this is a ripoff. This is poorly constructed. But it isn't it intentional. Like that, maybe, maybe they should probably uh, probably put it on um on a, on an inform on a note notice saying, yeah, oh, this is made to look poorly constructed. So DC's current series called Amethyst has been proposed with the sixth issue, uh, the final finale, now scheduled for a release November 24th, so it's been delayed by nine weeks. Uh, with, del with delays of the final issue were brought up by, on Twitter by a fan, writer and artist Amy Reader apologized and said she was hard at work to make it a killer. This was launched put back in February as part of the young reader-centric Wonder Comics line. Amethyst follows a teenage herb girl named Amy who has discovered the orphan princesses of a magical dimension called Gem World. In this new series, Amy returns after several years away to find her home, has fallen into disarray, and she begins a quest to find out what happened, who caused it, and how to fix it. And then the comic industry got delayed because, you know, all hell broke loose. And then it was solicited for 2020, 20, uh, September 22nd, then it was pushed back to 20th of October, and now it's moved again to November 24th. So. Yeah, so this so a collection of all six issues is also scheduled for twenty twenty one in February of six on the sixteenth. I haven't read any of the stories. Uh I could have been interested, but like some people I believe some people in one time mentioned uh during the New Fifty Two that they described it as Game of Thrones with Steven Universe involved essentially. And I thought, okay, that actually sounds kinda cool, but then they cancelled it because DC sucked at the time. But uh what can you do? So, the Marvel Spider-Man Remaster game that says that you cannot, you know, um, have anything from the previous save. So, oh man, um, the trailer came out and it revealed Peter Parker having a new face that many people decided to look like Tom Holland. Yeah, um, yeah, many people were saying that it looked a lot more like Tom Holland than the actor who actually played him. And they did a side-by-side -side comparison. I saw it, and, and I'm thinking, yeah, that, that, that is clearly a replica of Tom Holland, and I do not know why. But, like, why change the face up? I know people were complaining about the face, I think, when the first when the Game Killers came out. But, like... Yeah, that, that's said to be one of the biggest changes of the trail in the game's remastering because it's essentially a different face. So they spent God knows how much money making this different face for purposes that make no sense, probably. But um, uh, I, I already have the game. I already played it. You saw me beat it. And I haven't played the DLC, but I am intending to hopefully play Miles Morales when given the chance. But, in other news, One Division's release date may have been accidentally leaked by Disney+. Plus. So, it's been sl slated to release, apparently, saying it's listed for 2020-11-27, or Friday, November 27th. Well, granted, it could be a placeholder and everything, but, and, so... This is said to take a bucket of salt, a, a grain of salt, because this could probably change. But at the same time, it's like, oh, th this would be kind of fun. I I'm looking forward to this, especially if Wanda is going crazy and they're going to replicate House of M without the mutants involved. But yeah, so I look forward to your announcement. But if it says November 27, you heard it here, everybody. Uh, everyone sees it coming and look forward to that.
So another set of delays are going to happen. So well, there's going to be this one shot that was set tied into Empire, the big Marvel comic event, which is going to lead into another big event called The King in Black or whatnot, which is Donny Cates' cosmic stuff called Web of Venom Empire's End. And sadly, it's been postponed owned as a by three weeks. The one shot is planned as a transitional handoff from the recent Marvel event Empire over to the next event, King in Black, which is scheduled to launch in December. It's no longer the House of Ideas. People have been saying it for year, for some time now. The House of Events. Like, before Death Metal happened, like, before Death Metal happened, what was the last big cosmic crossover story event comic they did? Metal. And you could make the argument Justice League No Justice, but mostly just Metal. And then before that, it was Justice League and Suicide Squad. And then before that, it was the convert. It was the DC Rebirth one shot. And then before that, it was the conversion event. So DC knows how to take its time with the buildups and whatnot. So, yeah. So Web of Venom is set. Empire's End is set to release in three three weeks after its proposed release date, which is uh, November four. Three weeks past its original solicitation, which was October fourteenth. They have not given a reason for it, but the creative team is still the same. So, yeah, the solicitation reads, For weeks, chaos engulfed Earth and space alike. First, the course of a serial killer, Cletus Cassidy, he was bonded to a remnant of a mysteriously powerful alien symbiote, resurrecting his psychotic alter ego, Carnage. Then the generations-long Kree scroll conflict reached its brutal head on Earth, where it's the shocking and unforeseen consequences. Meanwhile, one ancient entity, entity at the edge of the universe has awoken. And woken! Born of hate and darkness, it's the entity that feeds on chaos and brutality. And one group of unlucky fires is about to face it head on. So this is, like I said, part of the King in Black series written by Donny Cates and everything that features the ancient entity, a.k.a. Null, the dark god of the Clyter of the alien symbiote race that birthed Venom symbiote and his, and his various connected characters There's, and has been teased by some time of his arrival on the ongoing Venom series. And so now it's essentially, so it's the sequel to Absolute Carnage, which was last year. So insanity ensues, Absolute Carnage, you all. And now everyone's gonna probably be screwed. Until the next big event happens. And then we're going to have to witness that we're done being screwed again and again and again. And then we're probably going to have Krakoa go to war with Wakanda in Atlantis as after the X of Swords event. So, yeah, insanity all around. Crash Bandicoot 4. It's about time. It's about time. Development team on making the biggest Crash game ever. So... Like I said, this is a follow-up to the original trilogy, and all the other sequels are negated. But speaking to IGN ahead of the launch, Toys for Bob studio head Paul Young elaborated on the scope and ambitions of Crash 4 from the team behind the Spyro Reignite trilogy. So does that mean we're going to get a Spyro game in the future? Hopefully. We did set out from the very beginning to make this the biggest Crash game ever, noting that the recently released demo, which already led to some impressive speedruns, was meant to give longtime fans a sense of that scope. Didn't literally just mean the longest levels ever, but something much more all encompassing. That was part of the motivation for releasing the demo, to help more people get their hands on it and just get a feel for just how much bigger and massive the levels are. When you think about how we compared to previous games, it's not just the length of the levels, but also how densely packed the activities are. Some Levels like Snow Way Out ask you to explore open areas in limited ways, and it's not entirely linear in the same way you could compare it to the original trilogy. But he also emphasized that even as the scope of the game grew with new gameplay additions, additional modes like inverter mirror, inverted mirror mode, playable characters, and more, grounding it to the classic crash platforming experience, returning players no, was a key aspect of the developmental process. We developed the tools, set of new abilities. We knew the masks and their give new powers were going to be part of what we wanted to do. The layer of top up the core class gameplay and the balance of it is something we were really sensitive about all the way through. There's really new, there's new masks, there's new locomotion tricks. 
this new alternate heroes but we want to make sure that you're coming into this game personally to play as crass and we don't want this string of desperate experiences where it felt like all kinds of other things outside that may give it variety people might overpower what what that core experience is so when we were looking at the original trilogy many of us looked at crash 2 as a really good example of hitting the right balance noting he explained that was the lens which we applied and said hey everything that we're putting into this and the way we're distributing it and pacing it out does this complement oh on foot core platforming gameplay because if it doesn't let let's get it out get it out and make sure that we may crash the center of this game so it is set to launch if i'm correct it is set to launch this week i could be wrong uh let's double check on that crash 4 is set to launch uh let's see yep october 2nd so in two days hooray so google launch night and all all the news that was announced so what was announced at the google launch event um so they have announced several big products and several game-changing events google pixel 5 which is the next big smartphone phone, and it's costing up to what 699 i think could be wrong on that but still google pixel 4a 5g chance on uh the phone, another smartphone comes with a slightly larger 6.2 inch screen and a slightly faster Snapdragon 765 G processor. It additionally, features a ca dual cameras with the same 12 MP wide angle and 16 MP ultra wide cameras, and all the camera tricks as seen on the Pixel 5. And another thing you'll get on on 4A 5G is a big AH battery read that can also last up to 48 hours for extreme battery savior mode. Google Chromecast with Google TV. Hooray! So it's saying it's a lot smarter now that it's running in Google TV with an Android OS running on the back end. Users will be able to download all their favorite streaming services. The Google Chromecast with Google TV also supports 4K HDR content up to 60 frames per second. It's also one of Google's most affordable streaming devices yet at only $49.99, which is less of a cost of the Comcast. Chromecast Ultra, and it's available for purchase right now. Google TV, after introducing Android and YouTube, Google is bringing together all those desperate streaming services and platforms under one Google TV umbrella. So, yeah, big, big stuff. We got the Nest Audio, which is set for retailing price of 99 and is set to launch on the 5th of October. So, yeah, it's part of the launch night in event and whatnot. They announced it all that. Uh, crazy stuff all around. However, I am not much of a Google guy besides YouTube content making and, well, the search engine. I don't really follow any of their Google stuff and I have no interest in it. So, Amazon Prime had the upcoming Amazon Prime exclusive uh, Borat sequel will be releasing on October 23rd exclusively on Amazon according to a report by Collider. And... And it sets the launch before presidents before the upcoming presidential election. So, yeah, get ready for that insanity that comes with it. So, get ready. Uh, I'm not even gonna go into the presidential debate that happened last night because if I do, I'll go crazy. But we did get news on Miss Marvel's Disney Plus series. Kamala Khan has had has found their cast cast member so i'm not going to try to pronounce her name if for no reason then because i don't want to butcher it and make someone offended so yeah she is but the actress is referred to her referred to herself as a pakistani american muslim teenager with immigrant parents so yeah who and miss marvel's a pakistani american teenager so she says to become the first mcu muslim superhero on screen so yeah, the actress um uh say uh she was part of this year's to Toronto's International Film Festival's Next Wave Community, wherein she was asked who would play her in a movie, to which she responded, Iron Man duh. According to CBC, her dreams of becoming a cinematographer, the female account listed for an for, for an I, I can't pronounce her name, includes a short film push that she directed. Uh the directing duo 
and we'll be having the blockbuster bad boys bad boys for life we'll direct some episodes in the series joining them in the director's bullpen is Mira Menon, a comic book TV series veteran who has directed episodes of Marvel's The Punisher, Walking Dead, and Titans. So, yeah, let's take a look at this girl's uh, track record. I, I'm, I'm curious to know. And plus, people were saying they were looking for someone at the right age, like 17, since Miss Marvel is in high school. So, let me see. She's 18, okay. And she is excited to play the character, so that's going to be fun. But uh, let's see if there's a Wikipedia article of her. Uh, not much information I could find so far. Uh, man, where can I find her? Find uh, if she's, you know, she doesn't have a Wikipedia article. I, I want to know her past works though. To, to, let's go to IMDb. Since she's set to be Miss Marvel, a lot of eyes on her now. Let's hope the people who are fucked up in the head don't try and think of anything. But sadly, this is the internet, so, uh, yeah, I pretty much give up. Oh, this is going to be her first big role. Big, big role entirely. So, let's see how she does. I, I'm going to give her a chance. Let's see how she performs on the big, on the small, on the, on the big screen and on the small screen. I don't know how to describe it. So, Godfall, the upcoming next-gen looter shooter from Counterplay Games and Gearbox Publishing will be $10 cheaper for players to buy it on the PC as opposed to on the PS5, which is $69.99. So, $60 bucks PC, $70 on, on the PS5. So, woo! In fact, have they even announced... The pricing for you know for Xbox One exclusives, Xbox Series X exclusives like heck, Ubisoft's launch window games, including Assassin's Creed Valhalla and Immortals: Phoenix Rising, are being listed at sixty bucks across the board. But Ubisoft hasn't rolled out ruled out the price increase in the future. However, games like Call of Duty e and NBA are seeing ten dollar price hikes for the next gen versions. Uh. And Miles Morales is a special case as the standard edition will cost 50 bucks. That's likely because the game is smaller in scope compared to the full retail release, similar to Nox, Naughty Dog's Uncharted Logs Legacy. So, yeah, Godfall launches on PC November 12th, both or alongside PS5 on either November 12th or 19th, depending on your region. All PS5 PRs come with an early equipment starter pack, cosmetic skin, zero sword from Borderlands. And whatnot, and it also includes a digital edition, deluxe editions for Sackboy Big Adventures and Do Demon Souls. So, yeah, uh, this is uh, like everyone knew this was coming. Not, we're not happy with it. I I'll acknowledge that, I think. But yeah, uh, a lot of people were like, "Well, why?" It's like here's the thing. I I can't. I'm not 100 certain if I remember this correctly, but I think Jim Sterling did say he would have been all right if game prices went up 10 bucks or 20 bucks, if you know the if they if, if it got rid of microtransactions and everything to offset the cost because of how expensive video game development process is made. They, like like GTA, like how many times has it cost over 100 million bucks to produce? It's just insane nowadays how much gaming costs more so than movies ever had and, and that's saying something because uh yeah it, it, just insane so oscar isaac and jake i'm not pronouncing that last name are set to start a movie about the making of the godfather so yeah godfather continues its rise to fame and everything but uh according to thr oscar isaac will play francis ford coppola while Jake will play Robert Evans, a former actor who became boss to Paramount Pictures and greenlit The Godfather. So this is a documentary movie series, movie, mo movie, movie about, well, the insane productions of the classic production of The Godfather because there was so much stuff talked about in that. Uh, I, I don't know much about the production of it, but still... So it's going to be very interesting where when that movie comes when that documentary movie comes out. Also, Dwayne the Rock Johnson has announced the main cast member for his upcoming NBC comedy series Young Rock. And 
shared the casting news on Instagram, reeling the actors that have been selected to play younger versions of himself. Elf on the NBC sitcom, which he says is based around his wild and unpredictable childhood and formative years growing up. Three actors have been cast for Trey Johnson and throughout the various stages of his life. Adrian Grulax, Grula, Groluk. Gru, I'm pretty sure I pronounced that rock. That rock. That that wrong, but uh, as we give him the role of the 10 year old Will Dewey, the nickname given to Johnson by his godparents. So we could have went with Little Rock, but that wouldn't work. While Bradley Constant has been tapped to play 15 year old version of The Rock, finally, Marco Polo star, I'm not pronouncing his name, has been cast to play 20 years old Rock when he was playing football on a scholarship at the University of Miami. Also announced that Stacy Leilu. Leo Leo will be playing his mother or Mama Rock as she will be aka Mama Rock. Well Joseph Lee Anderson will take the role of the star's late father, Rocky Johnson, OG original rock. Except that's what OG stands for, so why was that even written? And the Tulsa rounds out the cast in the highly entertaining role of Johnson's grandmother, Leah Mavia. Uh, and though the first episode will be dedicated to his late father who passed away earlier this year. So fuck 2020 continuously. So it will chart his childhood from str- growing up from up in a strong, resilient family to being surrounded by the wild characters of his professional wrestling family to playing football at the University of Miami. It will explore the roller coaster that shelf that has shaped Johnson to the man he is today and the larger than life characters he's met along the way. So does that mean we'll get a cameo by Roman? Because that, I would be all for that. Activision continues the banning on Warzone. Cheaters, as part of the game's Season 6 update beginning, Call of Duty Activision has announced that they have reportedly banned 20,000 cheaters of the Call of Duty Warzone game. A report from Scythe citing an Activision spokesperson and people familiar with the matter says that the publisher issued a ban wave on Monday with some terminations related to the use of a popular cheating mod program called Engine Owning. The engineering that website now lists as Modern Warfare 2019 chat cheat as detected, suggesting that the Activision has successfully halted its use in-game, wiping the accounts of thousands of cheaters in the process. The Vice Alt report specifically mentions the case of streamer Nick Wagnificent Waggard, whose account was permanently banned in the middle of a live stream. Sources told Vice that Waggard was using the now detected cheat in Warzone, which resulted in his ban. So this but like back in April, there was a 50,000 account ban. For cheating, knowing that Warzone has a zero tolerance for cheaters, and the game's developers issued more ban waves for coming in July, and so on and so forth. So yeah, Activision's taking this seriously, super, super serious, and just laying the ban hammer all around. John Cena says his in-ring career is not over, appearing on Tonight Show starring Jimmy Fallon, becoming the first in-studio guest to talk to the, of the talk show since the virus. While promoting his upcoming children's book, Elbow Grease Fast Friends, Cena said why is it important for him to stay connected with his younger audience since his career for in-ring career WWE is no longer very active. I have a very young audience in WWE, a lot of kids and families, and as my in-ring career with WWE is not active, although not over, I want to continue sending the messaging to those younger viewers. Okay, so... I'm kind of against Cena coming back. Like, here's the thing. I would only accept if Cena came back if he comes back as a heel. Because you, you can't really... Ha- because, because okay, so when it happened by mistake, it, it happened by coincidence. It happened by cosmic timing, essentially. But then there you start to acknowledge whoever fights the Fiend becomes different. Their past becomes their future. So Cena has to come back as a heel. That, that makes sense, or else they'll just shrug it off and negate more effects on Wyatt's powers? I mean... Yeah, it's just frustrating when, if they don't acknowledge this. And the dream match people won with Cena and a certain dream is now dead to people because of what allegations had came out about him. And I will not go into those allegations, because if I do, I will be depressed. So, Tay Conti says she underwent therapy in order to wear her in-ring outfit. One of the rising stars of the women's division took to Twitter on Tuesday to explain why she's trying to overcome her mental insecurity when it comes to wrestling throughout long sleeves and low-waist shorts. And with low-waist shorts, while stressing that she does not feel the same way while posing for bikini pics, 
She revealed she underwent therapy to feel good in her own skin wearing, and wear revealing outfits inside the square circle. Writing on Twitter, I know I always post bikini pics, but being in the ring without long sleeves and with low waist shorts was a challenge. A mental insecurity that almost nobody believes I have, but yes, I do. After a good amount of therapy and mind work, I did it. We all should feel good in our own skin. Props to her. Props to her. Um, yeah, she signed a contract earlier this month and has a black belt in judo oh, and a blue belt in Brazilian jiu-jitsu. She spent four years in WWE until she was released back in April as part of the company's wide cuts brought about by the COVID-19 pandemic. So she's now in AEW, kicking ass, hopefully doing well as part of the initiative of, you know, expanding the women's division and hopefully making it much better. So I'm glad she had to, I'm glad she fought this through and is able to become more comfortable with herself. So props to her on that. So remember Jeff Hardy and his whole disastrous year last year. Um, he is now scheduled to go to court on October 22nd to answer charges for his DWI iOS driving while influenced arrest on October 3rd, 2019. It was delayed several times this year due to the pandemic. The official North Carolina North North Carolina court calendar shows that Hardy is scheduled to face DWI charges. And 30 day civil revocation of his driver's license on uh, at 1 p.m. Um, e- Eastern Standard Time on October 22nd on Moore County Courtroom 20 number 201. So, yeah, let, let's hope that uh, let's hope this. Uh, yeah, he his driver's license has been suspended since the arrest per North Carolina's as uh, traffic laws. So I, I'm hoping that things work out. Oh, but WWE probably doesn't help matters because of the Sheamus few, which I'm still horrendously annoyed about. Because why on earth would you go ahead and risk risk exacerbating his prop the problem he's dealing with constantly, and then just like making it potentially worse? Don't get it. Edge, on when he should be able to return to the ring. So, Edge said in an interview on the recent ep- episode of Busted Open Podcast, Edge called in and provided an update on his tricep injury that he suffered from his backlash match and called his recovery a slow process, but also a learning process. I mean, I don't know. It's a learning process because I'm going to be 47 next month, so I didn't know how I heal from injuries, surgeries, and things like that. Edge admitted, it's a slow process. I'm not going to lie. The tricep is a different thing. I got back from an Achilles in six months. But I was 35 doing that. So at 10 year, ten plus years, I don't know. It's a different thing. You don't realize how much your triceps is involved in almost everything you do in terms of arm movement. So I don't know yet. I know it's a lot slower than I thought it was going to be because I just have this mentality of right now, no big deal, surgery, P- PT, and we grind through it. We break down the scar tissue and off we go. So I don't know the injury itself or if, or if, it's, if I'm a little older. I don't know what it is, but it's not as fast as I would have liked. Edge had last provided a similar update back in July where he reiterated he's still trying to take things slow and admits that he may be impatient and trying to recover as quickly as possible. Well, we haven't gone to the explosive stuff yet. We don't really know. It's, a three, it's three months out, so I don't know. Maybe it's just I'm impatient. I think it's really what it is more than anything. I just assumed by three months I should be almost ready to go, and that's not the case. So I maybe I just need a little more patience with my body now. So he did, he, but he said he did, but not in the way most people think when exp- when asked if, if it was tough to watch Raw at home. Strangely, a little, but only from the aspect of things I've never encountered before. So I never encountered doubt before. I never looked at something and go, can I physically do that? And it never crossed my mind, and now it does, and now it's a different thing. And sure, because I'm older, it's also, it's also because I have kids now, and I just see things, and I realize how this happened and how this happened. I've been wouldn't have happened before. I watch. Okay, should I get in there and pull a match with that guy? I think I could. Ah, uh, I know I can. And it's just the inner dialogue that I have with myself when I watch that, watch that I go through that I would not have before. He also opened up his mentality, he including his uh, going through injuries, including his Achilles injury and neck injury that was oh, that ended his career for ten years, and vowed he would return as he is excited to get in the ring with some of the younger talent. And continue naming people like Ricochet and Mustafa Ali that he would love to get in the ring with. So they would desperately need something to do. So props to Edge. I'm hoping he comes back at the same time. I still hope he takes it easy with his lay, with his with his body because I do not want to see Jeff Hardy be Edge be paralyzed or die in the ring. T 
Tegan Knox has been announced to be getting is it injured and suffered a tour a ACL during her the backstage attack by Candice LeRae, which took Knox out of the last Wednesday's his number one contenders battle royale, and it was scheduled for an M MRI. In an update, that day announced this afternoon that Knox did suffer a torn ACL, and she has already undergone surgery to repair this tear. So this is the third injury she's had since 2017. So that so yeah, it, it just sucks. It just sucks. Sucks for her. Like she's had three ACL tears in her legs, three times. Since 2017, that, that's gotta suck and really detrimental to one's health, mental mental health, because then people will start saying, well, maybe she should stop. And that's a hard, addictive process because, heck, we set this to Undertaker multiple times and he got older and older and older and still was like, hey, I could do this, I could do this, I could do this. Even when people say, stop, 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 because I blame Vince for enabling this problem. Also, there's a new poster art for the confirmed new title for the Godfather 3 Director's Cut that was announced earlier this month. So, yeah, it's part of the recut of the dot godfather part three movie uh francis for coppola he is basically going back and changing the movie up and it's and it's rumored to be five minutes shorter actually than than the than the previous two hour and 42 minute one and it's been retitled as it's been retitled as mario pozo's the godfather coda the death of michael corleone corleone on the director's cut will incorporate incorporates a detailed frame by frame process to replace low resolution optics from the film's original narrative. If in addition and like a whole bunch of stuff has been been given one more chance for people. So yeah, it officially arrives on December eighth of two thousand nineteen. So uh, two thousand twenty. Sorry, but I'm curious. I I want to see this cut. I have watched the original Godfather three. Yeah, I'll probably talk about that one day if I get the chance. But yeah, the Godfather 3 director's cut. I'm curious to know what it is. But uh, considering how much he's made two cuts of Apocalypse Now. The first cut, the original theatrical release. Then he made the Apocalypse Now Redux. Redux and now Apocalypse, Final, Apocalypse Now Final Cut. So now he's making a second direct, a director's cut for Godfather 3. It's just, this guy just doesn't know when to stop. Francis Ford Coppola, you crazy. So, yeah, that's about it for all the news of today. Hey, that was a fun read. Now, this would normally be the day I would talk about the new comics I got. I did not go to Third Eye Comics today because I went on Monday, got some comics, but um, I ultimately did not... I pre-ordered the new comics. They should be here sometime this week, hopefully Thursday, and then I, on or Friday. Then I could get and talk about those, those, and prepare for my next set of videos from. So, uh, yeah, that's where I'm stopping here. So this was Neo Reality Collective and Neo Reality Entertainment. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and donate. Stay tuned for more. And as always, stay safe, everyone, and take care.